Hello guys, my name is Kiki and I am back with the second generation of my fully open source space mouse called Space Rat. With the help of this you can navigate in your CAD software along five axes. If you want to build one yourself, keep watching the video and you will get all the necessary information. Then let me show you a short demo and let's get to the video. So if you haven't seen my previous video, which was a simpler two axis version, I would definitely recommend to check it out. I will put a link to the description below. Uh, but in the last two weeks I worked quite a lot on this version 2, Space Rat, I call it a Space Rat. So let me tell you how it works. Basically you can move it back and forth or tilt it back and forth, left and right, all around. And then on the side there is this slider button and then there is a button at the top. A basic working principle is the following. There is a spring in the middle, it's a relatively strong spring, a strong spring which is holding everything in the center and giving the, the flexibility itself. And then at the top under the DECA cover there is an MPU 6050 accelerometer and gyroscope which is sensing the or measuring the angular change of this top part and with this it's calculating the angle and then for the side arm I'm using a Hall effect sensor and the magnet on top of it and basically while you are moving this side arm back and forth it's measuring the, the magnetic force basically and uh, checking the north and the south pole it's a fully analog Hall effect sensor and then there is an Arduino micro microcontroller board in the base, which is which is the brain of the whole device. So at first, let me show you the the component list, and afterwards I will jump to Fusion 360s to show you the the 3D files, and that way you will understand how it exactly works. So these are all the components you're gonna need to build one. You can buy this, all these components for roughly 20, 25 euro, depending on where you order it from. Then let's start at the beginning. You need an Arduino Pro Micro. It's really important to get an Arduino uh, which has native USB port, otherwise it will not work. And then there is the MPU 6050 gyroscope and accelerometer sensor, this angular change sensor. And there is this 49E Hall effect sensor. This is for the arm. A push button for the top. It's important that you need roughly an 8 mm long pin here. Then three pieces of these neodymium magnets, 6 times 3 mm, uh, two resistors for the debouncing of the button, and then the spring, this is basically which is giving it the flexibility and holding everything in center. It's a 3D printing 3D printer uh, heat bed spring. 25 times 8 mm you need a couple of thin flexible wires I defined here the outer diameter because uh, you have to run through all these wires in the middle of the spring so they have to be really thin and flexible then you need a USB cable it's important that you need a data cable with four wires inside then you have to cut off at the end the connector this connector and then a few M2 self-tapping screws and an M M3 hex screw. And now let's jump to Fusion 360. So this is the model itself. So you can see there is the button on the top, on the side arm here, on the side, and then the top part, the bottom part, the hole for the, the cable, the cable is coming out, and all the holes for the for the screws, some positioning pins. And then let's remove this top part. And then you can look inside. I will also hide this 
top button. And basically the MPU6050 sensor is sitting here, right here. The OLFX sensor is going here underneath this arm and its cables are coming up here. And all the cables will go down here through the spring. I did not draw the spring, but the spring is sitting here in between these two components. It's sitting inside this hole and inside this hole. And then the cables run through here and they are coming out here. The Arduino microcontroller is sitting here at the bottom. And then this is the this is the bottom of the MPU6050 holder. Here you're gonna put your three magnets. It's really important that uh, there are two magnets on the sides and one will sit here. I will show later another picture from a build, a build picture. And you have to position them such a way that both of the side magnet has to ripple the one in the middle. So whatever it means that each magnet has a north and a south pole. And for example, it's north, south, south, north, north, south. And this way, the two magnets on the side will keep the middle magnet and so the arm in the middle. And basically then you can just move this arm on a curve back and forth. And below this arm here, let me hide the arm here. Here is sitting the, the analog hall effect sensor. Its three legs are going through this, these three holes and it's glued in here. And the legs are connected to the power of the MPU6050 sensor and the wire is going down. And then this is the top part. Here is a cavity for the, for the push button itself sitting here and you have to glue it in at the end and solder the two wires. And basically that's it. Let me also show you a section analysis. So this is how it looks like from the side, cut it in half. So this is the top button. Then the push button itself is sitting here and its pin is going into this hole and you have to glue it in at the end. And then the MPU6050 sensor is sitting here on this level. Hall effect sensor is sitting here. Then all the wires are coming through here. They are going down. This is the cavity for the spring itself. All the wires are going through in the middle of the, of the spring. Go down and they are coming out here in this direction. It's cut it off now. Then the Arduino is sitting here. And basically that's it. So as a next step, let's jump to the circuit diagram. This is it, it's really simple. You have to connect and solder up the four wires of the USB cable to the relevant pads here. Basically you have to connect the data plus and minus pins to this and this resistors here. And then you have to connect the ground to, for example, to the shield of the USB connector, to any of these pins or any of the ground pins. And then the VBUS or UVCC, you have to connect, for example, to this fuse here, to this side of the fuse. And that's it. And then there is the push button for the top. And uh, these resistors are the, and the, the capacitor are for the debouncing of the button. And then the MPU6050 connected to the to the Arduino Pro Micro and also the Hall effect sensor. And it's really important to mention that due to the reason to be able to run all the wires through the spring, uh, all the sensors which are connected into the top of the, of the case, basically, the power and the ground pins has to be soldered directly to the MPU6050. And you only have to run down one of the button pins one of the whole effect sensor pin and then the two pins for the clock and the data of the MPU6050 and then one VCC and one GND pin. So altogether, if I remember correctly, it's six connections that you have to run through the in the middle of the spring. That's it. And then let me show you a few pictures about the build process itself. So these are all the 3D, part, 3D printed parts you're gonna need to build this. Uh, space mouse. 
the only two things which are missing that the two small pins which are positioning this part to this part but they are just two three millimeter diameter pins and that's it printing all these parts takes roughly three four hours or maximum five hours they are relatively small and fast for sure it depends on the speed of your printer and on the layer thickness i on this video i printed the bigger parts with 0.28 millimeter layer height and the small parts with 0.2 millimeter then let's jump, jump to the build process so i would recommend you to start here with this mpu60 folder with the bottom side glue in only the two two magnets on the sides it's important not to glue in the middle one because otherwise you will not be able to put in the arm at the end so only put in the two side ones as i told before take care for the north and south part then just try to fit the arm itself it has to move really easily you most probably has to do some filing and so on and so on to to be able to to move this easily because the magnets themselves have to keep them in the middle so this have to move really really freely here then as the next step you can remove the arm already and glue the the whole effect sensor into its cavity underneath this magnet it's not shown here we have to glue it in and the marking of the IC has to look up so just glue it down and then let's go to the next picture then here you can see the three legs of the of the oil effect sensor this is the MPU6050 sensor secured with two screws and then everything soldered that as the next step you have to solder the two wires to the to the push button itself then all the wires you have to run through the hole here and then this is how it looks like as you can see all the wires came through here i put a shrink wrap onto it and then now you can fit the arm itself screw it in and glue in the middle magnet afterwards as the next step you can put the spring put on this bottom part put in the two pins that i show which we have positioning here i put a tape onto the wires but it's not really not necessary then as the next step you can solder all the wires to the arduino board according to the circuit diagram i showed before then fit the two parts together screw everything together i mean screw the bottom to this part here i run the wire around here this way if you open it up you can just remove the board easily and you can work on it if it's needed and then as a final step you can put on the the bottom part and screw them in from the bottom so this bottom part fits through from the top fits through this uh, button also easily and then you screw in from the bottom and basically that's that's all from the build process and then let me show you the arduino code i do not want to to go into all the details i will just shortly run through it's including all the libraries initiating the interrupt which is for the button reading initiating also the mpu6050 reading then it's it's doing an offset calibration and initiating the mouse and the keyboard commands this code works such a way that it's sending over to fusion 360 basically mouse and keyboard commands so basically it's imitating like if you would use your mouse and keyboard for navigating inside the software and then the loop is running every 50 microseconds it's reading the mpu the angular data and reading the all effect sensor data then it's just logic to decide which mouse and keyboard commands to send over to the pc depending on which axis is is moving and which if the button is pressed or not basically that's it okay and then let's do some testing i just plug it in and as you can see if i tilt up and down and then it's it's rotating in this direction if i tilt it left and right it's it's rotating around the z-axis if i slide this side button forward then it's zooming out if i'm pulling it back it's zooming in and then if i press on the button then it's moving the part up and down and left and right so it's spanning 
and I can still use the the zoom function here. The only function that I could not solve is that if I cannot rotate the the part itself here around in this direction. This is the only thing I could not solve. As you can see if I want I can move it really slowly. If I want I can move it fast. Then if I press the button again then it's moving up and down. So it's really easy. And then another feature because I get I got quite a lot of comments that this way it's a problem because uh, basically it's using the same mouse like the space mode itself. So for example if I'm moving it left and right and now I'm moving the mouse as you can see I, I can move the the space mouse itself. So it's interfering basically with the with the standard mouse. So for this reason I searched around online and managed to find a, a, a solution to this. So I managed to find a software called Mouse Mux, which if you just start it up, as you can see from now on, I have two mouses. This is one of them, and this is the other one. As you can see, the one with this red triangle is belonging to the space mouse. Now I am moving the space mouse, but the other one, the green one, is not moving. And I can move them totally independently now. It works quite well. I only have one problem with this one. So this way when I use this software I cannot use the, the zoom function for some reason. I have no idea why. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. I do not know yet. I will contact with the guys from MouseMux and I try to figure out. We figure it out. Okay guys, so basically that's it. Uh, I really like this project. I think it's really cool. Although it's not perfect. For this reason I have already ideas for version 3. <laughs> I will definitely try to make a version 3 of this, which will work similarly to an original 3D connection space mouse, where I really try to somehow imitate the same, the exact same motions. So all the tilting motions and the side, uh, sliding motions from a mechanical point of view. Uh, what I see as a bigger problem is definitely the code itself because the only way to be able to to move the part in the software itself along all the six axes axis is to write some scripts in fusion 360 and to be honest i have no idea yet how to do this but uh, i try to find this out and maybe in a couple of weeks or a couple of months uh, i will come out with a version 3 which will already be fully functional you can find the link below for all the source files in the description below. Uh, so if you want to build one yourself, feel free. I hope a nice community will come together and we can improve it together further to, to make it better and to make a cheap alternative to the 3D connection space mouse. I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and I hope I see you next time. Bye.